Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at something pretty cool today. Bandai has come out with some sort of revived, kind of revived versions of their HG Elgheim series of kits. Or we're just going to be taking a look at the Mark 1 here today, but they also put out, I think, three other ones, as well as a completely new HG Elgai Mark II, which came out as a P-Bandai kit, or is coming out as a P-Bandai kit. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get my hands on that one or not, but I'd like to, in order to compare that to the old uh, larger scale R3 uh, L game Mark II, which I reviewed previously. If you missed that, you can go back and check that out. If you're a fan of the series and you didn't know that I reviewed that kit, I did review that one already, which was very cool, super detailed, and at a larger scale. This is a smaller uh, scale for this one being an HG. This is in 144 scale. So I'm guessing it'll be similar in size to a 144 scale Gundam kit. But as I understand it, this is basically a mix of old parts because these kits were previously available and then there's also some new runners in here as well too. So we'll take a look at all that. Anyway, I'll let you guys know what the kit is like, but we do have some pretty cool box art on here as well too. So let's go ahead and take a look around the box and the contents here first before we get the kit all built up starting here on the front. So pretty unique design here for the front of the box. You got the name there, obviously very large. Over here, 01 in the series. You can see it's total height, weight, cockpit system, and some details about the armaments over here. And pretty cool retro style uh, painting there for the image, the main image for the front of the box. I do like that, it looks pretty interesting. Around here on the sides of the box, basically the same thing. Let's go ahead and head to the bottom of the box. There you get a look at what your hand options are gonna look like for this. And you've also got a cable that connects the power launcher and energy gauge gates on the hips uh, have been created with tubes so you'll have a little wire included that will connect that gun to the holes there in the front of the hips like that and update point so I guess here is what's going to be new about this case as the balance of the head parts have been improved compared to the previous model so I guess new head parts compared to the original version the original release it also says that the parts division in the thighs has been changed this has resulted in updated stylish form so I guess the part separation in the thighs and then also down here, the shoulder articulation uh, axis, I'm guessing that's supposed to be axis, uh, have been renewed uh, to enable the recreation of natural action poses. So better shoulder articulation as well too. Also over here it says a gimmick that works with the Pluller from the L game Mark II sold separately has been adopted for the first time. Parts to hang the L game are included. So if you're transformed uh, L game Mark II, you can hang the Elgai Mark 1 off of there using these hand parts in there, I guess. So there you go. And then on the top of the box, you get a look at just what the kit is going to look like. All painted up front and back. Very cool, unique design. It sort of like looks a little bit similar to something like out of Zeta Gundam or something. I believe they probably came out around the same time. Uh, and they could even have the same mechanical designer offhand. I don't know. But there you got a couple of stills there from the anime. And a no list price here printed on the box, of course. But the price for these is pretty standard for an HG kit. So, like I said, uh, some of these runners will be new, and some of them will be old. We'll take a look at all those in just a minute. Let's go ahead and take a look at the manual here first. On the front, we've just got the box art there once again, and on the back, it looks like, uh, just once again, just photographs of the kit. And we do have some information here in Japanese and in English, so we've got all that. It's probably all stuff that you can find online already, but if you want, you can go ahead and pause the video and read some of that information if you're so interested. And checking any of that out and down here at the bottom we've also got the color guide there in Japanese and in English as well too for your reference opening it up to the center pages we got a little bit more information over here once again it's all in Japanese and in English it seems to be kind of mostly about the weapons the head unit the power launcher the radome slate which I guess is here on the side of the legs large flosser system stabilizes for HM units that mainly function to stabilize the unit when it is in a landing or gliding so sort of like air brakes I guess like with the uh, hell diver kit which we just recently reviewed uh, but there you go we got some this is basically the end of the construction finishing up with the uh, weapons and then how to equip the weapons and everything but on the inside is where we have our parts list this is not in color now uh, and all of the construction is just located here for the most part let's go ahead and take a look at the runners so first off in here you got a couple of tubes and there's no metal inside these so it's just plastic tubes uh, you got this one shorter but much thicker one and then two of these long thin ones then we've got uh, runner SB6 here in clear yellow for our beam effect parts. Then our polycaps here, runner PC123 and sort of like a mustardy yellow kind of color. Alright, now from the old kit, these runners are dated back to 2001. Runner A1 here is some parts in dark blue. Runner A2 as well, just more parts here in dark blue. As you can see some weapons parts which looks like are going to be halves with some very long seam lines down the middle of those. Runner B, still among our original 2001 runners, is just a bunch of our white armor pieces 
and there is some pretty nice detail on those for this being an older kit. There's some really nice sharp little details. And the same thing here on runner C as well for the remainder of our white pieces, including some more beam effects here, which would be just a plain white plastic beam effect. So I guess the beam effect parts, the clear yellow ones, are probably new additions for this kit as well too, I would assume. And then for the last of our original runners here from 2001, runner D is in this kind of light tan color for a bunch of the joint parts and everything, hand parts are also on this runner. And then getting into some of our new parts here, runner E1, you can see you got those new hand parts for holding on to the L guy Mark II. We also have what looks to be like an action base connector here and a couple other joint parts probably for that uh, shoulder joint that I talked about. Then we do also have runner E2 which is a copy of this section right up here. And then finally runner G is our other new runner for this kit which is giving us some new weapons parts there in dark blue and a kind of medium blue gray color. We have one red part over here which I'm guessing is also there for the weapon and then some new white armor pieces on here as well. So there you have it guys. It looks pretty interesting and I would totally support Bandai doing this of sort of revisiting older HD kits and things like that. I hope that they'll do it some more for some of these kind of like slightly lesser popular series, anything that's not Gundam basically. That said, it looks like it is probably going to still have a lot of the same pros and cons of a lot of kits uh, from that time. There is some nice detail on there it looks like, but probably still going to have a ton of seam lines and everything on that. Let me go ahead and get it all built up and then we'll see how it looks. Alright guys, here is the kit all built up. Very nice looking. It pretty much is right in line with about an average like 144 scale Gundam kit. It maybe is a little bit taller than uh, some Gundams, but it's not necessarily all that big of a kit. Pretty nicely detailed though, considering most of the parts are original to the original release. We do have, of course, as you saw, a handful of new parts, but uh, a lot of the nice detail that you're seeing there on the kit is all the same as with the original kit. So for a kit of its age, it is pretty nicely detailed. There are a few missing little color apps here and there, but for the most part, most everything's there. It's not necessarily a very colorful design, so you ha have basically everything already represented there in plastic, just with a few little things missing that would be pretty easy enough to paint in if you were that concerned about it. Interesting that it didn't come with any stickers because some of the small little color apps could have certainly been fixed with just a couple of foil stickers or something. So usually you would expect Bandai to do that for an HG kit. So it's just kind of odd that they didn't in this case. But still, I think it ends up looking very nice with a little bit of panel lining on it. You just get some like gray panel liner, fill in some of the panel lines on some of the white detail areas. And uh, then just some like top coat on the top of it. I think it would be looking very nice just straight out the box. But let's go ahead and check out uh, all the accessories and everything here. All right, let's first just start off with simple stuff. You got your hand options. Those are just your closed fist hands, which uh, it's nice to have. They do look a bit odd because they look very flat, kind of like the old RG style hands, the closed fists that are just like really flat like that. And you also got these hands with the holes in there, which are new, but these are really only for holding on to the Mark II's backpack or the Mark II's, uh, I guess, transformation. Uh, if you have that kit as well too. If you don't, these are end up being uh, just kind of useless actually. You've got a couple of hands that basically serve specific purposes, like this one is a, just a rifle support hand for the large buster rifle, and this one is just with the handle of that molded together with the hand, uh, so that should be nice in that you don't have to actually fit the hand parts like around the handle, you just have the handle already molded together, it's just the wrong color here unfortunately. And then you have your uh, beam saber holding hand which has the clear yellow beam saber effect part with that, and you also have a second one of those is just an extra you can do something with. Now I just want to show you guys, uh, the original version of this kit came with just just a uh, plain white piece for the beam saber effect part. So this is new, the fact that you get an actual clear part for that, so that's definitely an improvement. We do now also have an action base adapter for this as well too, which should help for doing aerial poses. Then you have your shield, which is pretty nice. Here on the back, you have two mines stored up in there. Those are basically just there for show. They don't really necessarily do uh, much of anything. And two beam saber handles here. These ones also are just kind of there for show. They don't actually have a hole. You could drill a hole in there to turn this into an actual uh, handle, but it won't fit in any of these hands. You'd think it would fit maybe into these hands, but it doesn't quite fit into there because of the kind of bell end on the ends of those. But this just fits right onto the back of the arm there, but you also have these cannons here, which can attach onto the back of the arm themselves. Uh, you have two of them, so you could put one of these on each of the arms. These are just basically two halves sandwiched together, so you will have a seam line all the way down the ends of those. But uh, if you don't want to put those on the arm directly, you can put these onto the back of the shield here, which is pretty cool. Those just plug into the shield there like that for giving you some firepower in your shield. And I think that looks pretty cool. I always like a, a shield that has some offensive weaponry kind of built into it as well too. So I think that looks pretty nice. Then you got uh, five of your different wires that you're gonna use for these. So these can be used here for these guns, you see they have a little point where you're going to plug that into. Now again, these are just little rubber tubes, so they're not really very malleable. Like if they had an actual copper wire in there, you could actually bend and shape them. But in this case, they're just kind of going to 
just kind of do their own thing. So this then you could plug onto the arm and have this wire going around and then with this little tiny plastic piece there on the end that plugs right into the front of the crotch here. So it'll give you that look like that and again you've gone to five of those wires so you could use one to each side and you can also use them to the main buster cannon, uh, buster launcher I guess I should say. So here is that, it's very big this is all new, I'll show you how this compares to the old one here in just a minute. So. Here's the handle for that, and you can choose whether you want the handle to be plugged into any one of these particular spaces here. That just plugs into the side, but if you're gonna have this actually being held in the hand, then you'll swap that handle out for the hand that's already holding onto the handle like that. So it'll just use that one instead, and again, so that the handle's the wrong color there, unfortunately. As for the bipod up here at the front, each side is just on its own little ball joint, so you can move these independently down like that to have that standing up like that if you want it and that's really about it, it doesn't necessarily anything move on that other than that you got seam line on certain parts of this seam line all down here on the bottom side so with it being an hg gun even though it's new parts of course you're still gonna have a little bit of a seam line on it so that said it is definitely an improvement over the old version which you do have all the parts for right here so it's kind of basically like you have two of them in the box and the, as you can see the detail of them is very similar it's just that the old one doesn't have any part separation it's all one color and the other main difference is that the bipod is also different with this one it doesn't move it's just a fixed piece so that's just like that if you want to have that actually deployed you actually just have to take that piece out and swap it out now there is a poly cap up in there as well too so you have to use one of your poly caps up in there for holding the bipod so you swap that out for the open version of that which looks like that which I actually don't mind because uh, having this posable one means you have to kind of take that much more extra attention to make sure everything's lined up you have to kind of check it make sure okay it's lined up that way and that way like that with just a fixed posed piece it's very simple you just swap it out and that's that now you can't you're thinking okay well could I use the fixed pose one on the new one and no it's different it's a completely different connection here so you would have to modify that in order to use this piece if you preferred but again just the fact that you have this in here and all the pieces you need for that and the poly cap you need for holding in the bipod uh, it's just nice to that you basically have this then you could use this with a different custom kit bash or something like that or even have two here with your L game that would be pretty extreme but you could certainly do it it would take some painting and seam line removal everything on that of course but if you're willing to do a little bit of work I mean it's a nice thing to have in there it's just a little extra and then just speaking of other leftover parts you have just the leftover parts that end up being replaced for this new kit a couple of parts there on the head uh, some torso parts the parts for the forearm uh, thigh parts that are all new for this version of the kit but they're not necessarily that different they basically just account for the new little bit of extra articulation that's added in those areas the thighs the forearm the shoulder uh, the head is basically just a slightly different design of the head it's just a little bit more refined a shape for the new version otherwise that's really kind of about it so while we're on the topic let's just go ahead and get right into the articulation then here starting off with the head so that will go up to there not too bad and then down to about there and it's again pretty nice detail around on that of course, you can turn that around. This part that you see, like, for the neck is actually connected to, like, the bottom of the face there. It's just kind of odd, but that just works pretty well. Shoulder joints will swing out to the front like that, and then these are just connected uh, a little bit farther out in there. You can rotate them, and then up inside the shoulder armor here, you have that little flap that will kind of close up into there to allow you to bring the arm out a little bit farther, but still, ultimately, you can only bring the arm up to about there, which is not that high, but it's not that bad either, so that's going to be about the extent of how much you can raise that arm up otherwise the arm gonna work pretty normally rotation there at the top you got a single joint there in the elbow giving you just about a 90 degree bend which is a little bit lackluster but then you got a further bend here in the forearm the front of the forearm moves independently there like that and then the wrist of course just on a little ball joint there in the middle of the torso section there you do have a ball joint that will allow you a little bit of movement forward back side to side some rotation there and then just at the base of that you also got some rotation for the torso section so a little bit of movement there it's not that great but it's pretty good around here on the backpack this is kind of interesting I want to show you guys how this connects onto there because you have this big hole right there in the center you would think that's where the backpack plugs onto but it actually doesn't there you can see it's got the same hole in the backpack where it actually plugs onto is onto these square holes onto the side of these kind of parts that go up over the top of the torso there like that it's kind of interesting it fits right onto there and these little fins on the side can be moved up and down so if you want you can close them all the way up to the top there like that or open them all the way out to the side for his uh, flight pack I believe this is right so then going down here to the hip section these are basically just ball and socket joints so the articulation of them is not going to be all that great basically you can get the legs out to about there you can 
yes, that's not the first time that I've had the backpack fall off. I do kind of wish they would use this center connection point because it seems like that would be a little bit stronger. As is, it seems kind of easy to knock the backpack off of there. So just be careful with that. Anyway, you can bring the legs up pretty far up to the front there. These side skirt bits are just connected onto the side of the thigh. So those are just connected via a little ball joint there. You can kind of move them around or just a, not a ball joint, but just a peg in there. You can move those around a little bit in and out. And then our knee bend seems a little bit weak as it is, as it looks like it's only bending right there, but actually the kind of thigh frame can slide out of there a little bit like that for extra knee articulation so you can actually get that knee really far bent. The frame there looks a bit odd. It looks very thin up there in the thigh, but it does give you much better of a bend there at the knee, which looks really nice. And the piping parts here on the back of the leg also look really nice. Those ones, if you guys watch the live build of this, I was talking about this during the live build, but I would recommend you guys to cut that exactly at the right length. A lot of times when I'm cutting pipe bits and like the mesh pipe and things that come with different kits that you're meant to put on like for piping parts like that, I'll usually cut it slightly more than what's recommended just to make sure I have enough because it's always better to have a little bit more than not enough. Uh, but in this case, if you cut it too long, they, they'll kind of bend or they'll have a kink in there. They won't fit in there quite right. So cut it exactly at the right length that you, that's recommended to make sure that those fit in there well. But those look nice, it's a nice detail to be added into there. The side of the leg, of course, opens up as part of the gimmick for that, so that just opens up and kind of locks into place there. It still feels a little bit weak, like that could be very easily broken or come out of place kind of easily, so be careful with that. But that opens up, you got some nice detail up inside of there with some pistons and everything. Looks very cool. Close that back up. This front ankle part here, ankle armor piece doesn't move, that's just kind of fixed right there where it is, but the toe does bend. You can bend that all the way down. Up underneath the feet, you got full detail there. And these back toes also move independently. You can move those side to side as they are. The whole foot itself, you then can move a little bit forward and back, but not really all that much. Side to side as well too, gonna be a little bit limited, but you should still be able to get a pretty good, nice wide stance out of this while keeping the feet flat on the ground. And then as I was saying before, compared to your average 144 scale Gundam kit, it's gonna be pretty similar. Obviously, as you can see there, it's a little bit taller, but not by much. It's gonna be pretty close to the same size as most HG kits you guys are used to building. Well, there you have it, guys. As you'll see, now trying out a few different action poses with its uh, different accessories and things, I think Bendai did a really nice job on this kit, basically sort of breathing life back into, breathing some life back into an old kit that it wasn't necessarily all that bad. I feel like uh, with the majority of this kit still being original to the old kit, the old kit, you know, honestly, I don't think would really be all that bad if I was reviewing this without the new parts. That said, the new parts do certainly add nice bits of articulation in there for the shoulders, for the knees, especially to get a better knee joint uh, band there. Uh, and the, of course, the better, much better color separation there for the uh, Buster Launcher as well too is really nice. So definitely the new parts do add a lot to this whilst not Bandai not necessarily having to drastically make a lot of changes to the base kit, still mostly the original kit. They just had to, you know, add a few new parts in there and they really kind of updated it quite a lot uh, with just a few new parts. That said, does it feel like completely a brand new kit? No, it still feels like building uh, an older kit in some areas and then just with some newer parts. There is certainly a good amount of seam lines on there. There's little bits of seam lines kind of around on a lot of the parts there on like the arm, on the, the back of the arm, around on like the front of the ankle armor there, as well on the weapons, of course, and then on the backpack and just got seam lines around in different places. With it being an HG kit, that's not that big of a surprise. And then, like I said before, there's a couple of little missing color apps. A few little bits are not exactly the right color, but seems pretty minor as far as what you would have to do to get this to be looking uh, even better, but I think it's a really nice kit just straight out of the box too. So just with a little bit of detail work on it, maybe some top coat on it, I think you'd have a really nice kit. I would still like to get my hands on the Mark II and review that for you guys as well if I can. That you know, was a premium Bandai kit, as I said, uh, that I missed the pre-order for, so hopefully I can get my hands on one and at that time I'll review it and compare it with this kit and also compare it with the larger scale R3 version uh, that I reviewed previously. But until then, guys, hopefully this review was helpful if you're interested in seeing these kits, sort of the sort of revived kind of 1.5 uh, re-release versions of these kits. Um, 
I would say they're pretty cool. So check them out if you're interested, if you're a fan of the series, or just if you want to build something different for a change. I think it's a nice thing. It's, it's not that different from building a Gundam kit, but it was certainly a nice little bit of change of pace. So I like it. I like checking out different non-Gundam stuff sometimes now and then as well too. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to check out the kits, anything else there from Bandai, we've got them all at USA Gundam store. So check the link down in the video description below, as well as my coupon code there. You guys can use to save 10% off everything there on the site. Check that out. And just thank you guys as always for your support. I'll see y'all later. Have a great one. Bye guys.